Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making fermented zucchini relish. So my family just got back from five days of camping and we don't usually venture too far from home on these trips because we've got animals and we've got a really big garden to take care of. But I don't do any food preserving while I'm away and while we were camping, we grew <laughs> some monster zucchinis. There's only so many zucchini boats that I can handle, so I've decided today that I'm going to make a lacto-fermented zucchini relish. And I saw this recipe uh, thanks to Stacy from Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, and I'll link their channel below. You definitely want to um, watch them. All you're gonna need for this recipe is some dill, uh, zucchini, any kind, uh, good quality unrefined salt. I'm gonna be using Himalayan sea salt, and if I run out, I've got just a regular old sea salt. And I'm going to use a little bit of red pepper flakes and that's about it. So the first thing that I want to do is actually peel my zucchini. So I'm going to start with my largest one because this one is ridiculous in size. So just to make your life a little easier, you know, you can cut the ends off. And then I'm just going to use my regular kind of like potato peeler and peel the skins off of these. So I'm sure you guys are just like me that you, if you're growing zucchini, you very quickly become overwhelmed with zucchini and you're drowning in it. We like doing canned zucchini relish too, but as many of you know, I'm really enjoying the extra health benefits that we're getting from fermenting all of our food. Storage space is going to be a little bit of an issue for us, but we will cross that bridge when we get to it. So you want to make sure that you've got all the skin off of your zucchini. It's just not going to ferment really well and it's not going to taste good in, um, in a relish. And when you're making this too, you want to make sure the next step is going to be um, shredding the zucchini. And I'm just going to use my regular uh, shredder that I would for shredding carrots or those types of things. And you don't want the seeds in there as well. All right, so I've got my first big zucchini all peeled. And I'm going to chop it into smaller pieces just to make it a little bit more manageable in size and easier for me to deal with. We came home to so much food. I've already done two batches of pickles and now I'm going to be doing this as well. And I also froze a whole bunch of my cucumbers for winter smoothies. So I'm just going to chop this into more reasonable sizes and I'm going to get to shredding. And I will come back after I have shredded all this. My goal is to make two one liter mason jars. So I'll be right back after I'm done all that shredding. So I finished shredding up that, only just that one large zucchini and look how much I got. And I just used my box shredder, you know, you can use a food processor, anything like that works as well, but I, I like the workout every now and again. So I just use my box shredder. Most of the cores, so when you shred your zucchini, you don't want to get the seeds in there. So most of the cores are going to go to the chickens, but I'm going to keep some so I can save seeds because these zucchinis did really, really well for us. So I can save seeds for next year. So the next step in the process is to add your dill. And I was, like I said, I was watching Stacy's video and dill, uh, she was talking about how dill activates glutathione, which is like a master antioxidant in your body. So I love the idea of adding tons and tons of dill. And this is very much to taste. Unlike canning recipes, ferment recipes are really, really flexible because you don't have to worry about um, like shelf stability as long as you're storing them in cold storage or in a fridge. With canning recipes, it's really important that you're following exact canning protocols and ensuring that you're following those recipes, as I just said, exactly. So I'm just gonna cut up a whole bunch of dill. Like I said, and dill is one of my favorite crops to grow. It grows really, really easily. Um, you can even just sprinkle seeds. It doesn't really require a whole lot of effort to grow dill. And this year, I'm actually gonna let some of it self-seed and see if I can have dill all the way until our first frost, which would be really nice. A bunch of ours has already gone to seed. 
So like I said, you're going to need one liter mason jars. You're gonna to wanna to make sure they're sterile. So the way that I do that is I pour boiling water over them. I also have my pickle pebbles and my pickle pipes. These are not necessary for fermenting, but they sure do make the job a lot easier. The job of the fermented weight or the pick pickle pebble is to hold your food below the brine. And this ensures that you're not gonna have anything above the brine that's gonna go moldy. The pickle pipe, its job is to ensure that all the carbon dioxide that's created in the act of fermenting has a way to escape. If you don't wanna use something like a pickle pipe, it's perfectly fine, you just have to remember to burp your jar. But I've got so many ferments going and I've got so many um, tinctures to make and other projects around the homestead that remembering to burp my jars all the time um, usually results in explosive <laughs> type behaviors. So for me, the no muss, no fuss of the pickle pebbles and the pickle pipes is just the way to go. So I've got all my dill mixed in and I'm gonna add just a little bit of red pepper flakes too. I have a feeling my husband is going to like the kick of the relish. And I'm adding, I'd say about a quarter teaspoon total. This is my first time making this relish, so next year I may decide to add a little more. And now you're just, want to get, just going to want to get a little down and dirty. So first I'm gonna add some of, I have some dill flowers too. I'm gonna to add some to each jar at the bottom because after this, it's gonna get messy. The easiest way to mix this is to use your hands. So I'm mixing up my shredded zucchini with the dill and a little bit of the red pepper flakes. And I'm realizing now that I should have opened my salt jar first. So like I said, I'm using a Himalayan sea salt. You can use, if you have access to Redmond salt, which uh, I believe is available in the States and possibly, I'm gonna look in to see if whether I can get it here, you'll use that. Or if any unrefined sea salt will be your best friend for this particular recipe. So I'm just gonna go wash my hands off and then we will film the rest of this video right after. So I'm ready to start filling my jars. When you're making ferments, the preservation medium is salt. That's really all you need. And what's really nice about working with zucchini is it's super watery. So I don't even have to make a brine with this. It's going to make its own brine. So I'm gonna fill, I'm gonna use about half of a cup. Fill it, or put it in the jar, sorry, maybe a little bit more. And then I'm gonna add about a quarter teaspoon of salt and just sprinkle it on. And I'm just gonna keep alternating this. Really does help to have these nice wide mouth funnels. I tend to be pretty sloppy and messy, just ask my husband. There's constantly food on the floor and stuff like that. This helps keep things slightly neater. And partway through this too, I'm also gonna use my pickle packer to really pack that in and make sure my jar is nice and full. And I wanna make sure I leave some decent headspace for this as well, because the process of fermentation is gonna create gas. It's also gonna, like I said, there's gonna be liquid in this created. And so you wanna leave some space so it's not leaking all over your counter. And sometimes that can happen anyway, so it's not a bad idea, you know, if, you, if you're nervous about that or making a mess, to put like a plate or something underneath your ferments. I'm just gonna keep alternating as I go. And as you can see, a little goes a long way in this particular instance. I might only get one jar. One of the reasons why we've decided to switch to fermenting as opposed to canning, and I'm still gonna be doing a lot of canning, guys. Like, I can a lot of soup stocks and broths. Um, I'm gonna be canning a lot of tomatoes this year as well. I still can peaches every year, salsa. Um, but I really like the addition of the ferments because of all of the amazing health benefits you get when you make fermented food. Not only are you getting natural probiotics through the fermentation process, you're getting an increased bioavailability of B vitamins and digestive enzymes too. So there's just so many health benefits to it that I can't ignore it as a medium of preservation. So how am I doing? I can probably get another one more good scoop. Let's do my sprinkle of salt. What are you guys fermenting this year? Leave a comment below and let me know. 
what ferments you're going to try. The next ferment video is probably going to be a sauerkraut because it is definitely my most asked. You can see it's really, really watery. So I'm definitely not going to need any brine. And if you do find, like if you're nervous about that and you want to add a little bit of brine, you can totally do that. It's just salt and water. So one last little scoop, a little bit more salt, and I'll show you how we finish it off. Now, if you don't have cold storage like us, we don't have a pantry um, or a below ground pantry, unfortunately. Uh, we live in a bungalow with just a crawl space. So we're going to have to refrigerate these until our pantry in the garage gets cooler. Once it gets down to about eight degrees Celsius or so, you are good to go and you've got somewhere to store. If you look at that, I'll get my husband to kind of zoom in here. Look at all the liquid that's created from this. You see what I mean? Like you, just like making sauerkraut, you do not need to make a brine. I can squeeze just a bit more in there. Cause as you can see, I don't have enough to make two jars. So if you're not going to use a fermentation weight, it's really important that you find a way to keep your food below the brine. Um, before I invested in the pickle pebbles and the pickle pipes, I got really creative. I had Ziploc bags full of rocks, um, you know, anything you can do to kind of weight things down. So I'm just going to grab my pickle pebble, put it in. And look at that. As long as it stays, see now everything here, I may come in a little later and just scoop out those little bits of dill that I missed, just to be sure. But all of my veggies are below the brine, which is exactly what I want. And then all I have to do now is put on my pickle pipe and screw the lid on and I'm done. So one of the other things that's really nice and convenient in terms of ferments is that it's a lot faster than canning. It doesn't heat up my kitchen and I can make small batches like this without having to run my canner. So this, uh, Stacy mentioned, again, I got this recipe from Stacy from Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. The link will be below. I definitely recommend you guys follow their channel. They've got lots of really great information. But she said that the fermenting time is going to be anywhere from five to seven days. So my house is pretty warm in the summer. I'll probably taste this and check it in five days. When it's done, all you have to do is take your fermentation weight out and put a regular lid on and stick it in the fridge. Again, if you do not have a pickle pipe that's going to do your burping for you, you just have to remember about once a day to unscrew the lid and burp to allow those gases to release because the result could definitely be explosive. So thanks so much for joining me today and taking some time out of your day to visit my homestead kitchen. I hope this inspires you to make your own zucchini relish. And until next time, this is Corinne from Spirea Herbs.